evening and happy best for everyone. Good evening. So, of course, we all know that this month is the love month. So, I would like to request everyone to extend your um, big smiles and your warm hands with a handshake, of course, so that we will be able to express our love through this um, gesture.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. As I see your faces smiling, very happy, just thank the Lord that love exists not only on the month of February, but every day that we live, as long as God blesses us. Um, for many of you, you came over probably hearing that all the topics would be about love, relationship. It comes to everyone that when we talk about love and relationships, everyone gets so excited. Everyone gets to belong and pick up where they are so they would know what's about love and relationship. What's ideal and what's not. And I believe God is a message for us that when we get into relationship or when we prepare to get into relationships, we will know the principle about love. I learned that through the weekend, your theme is matching time. You know, I, I only know about matching time when I take examinations or make examinations. So which one is the right answer? And then there would be an instruction of get the best answer. So this evening, we would be talking about uh, the purpose of relationship. Have you ever looked back and evaluated what's the purpose of having a relationship? Or you just jumped into a relationship without knowing what's really the purpose about getting or relating with somebody. You see, from the beginning, God has created the need for a relationship in the heart of man. It was never the other way around. It was never somebody seeing somebody walk by and suddenly he felt that crazy feeling or the ticklish feeling or that sudden beat of the heart that suddenly he thought hmm there's something starting within me or hmm she made my heart skip a bit a few nights ago I'm an FB person, browsing the FB, 
I saw a little headline for a post name. He made my heart skip a bit. Cute, right? But how cute is cute when we really examine that from the very beginning, it was God who created the need for relationship in the heart of man. I want to invite you to open with me your Bibles in the book of Ecclesiastes 3.11. This is where our um, message will start off. Ecclesiastes 3.11. The verse in the Bible says, He has made everything beautiful in His time. Wow. When we read the Bible, we don't only read it because we like the words, but we read the Bible because there is an embedded message especially for us. That verse alone tells us that when God makes something, as He had made everything, He makes everything and made everything beautiful in His time. And the first line I said earlier was that from the beginning, God has created the what? The need of a relationship in the heart of man. Thus, when he created that, the text says, he made everything beautiful. But then you begin to think, are all relationships really beautiful? Then we're looking at that later again. The text continues to say, in his time, he has also set eternity in the hearts of men. And yet, they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. It was actually God who has created a spot in man, a vacuum, an emptiness that nobody can fill except God himself. It was God who initiated or gave the initiative to relate to his creation. When he created man, he initiated to connect and to relate with his creation. He made man to be the object of his act of giving. So this is where it all started. You know, when God created man, he also initiated to relate with him. Creating that vacuum inside man, it is only God who can fill it. But when he created man, he also initiated to relate with his creation. And he made him the object of his act of giving. What did he give man? No, he had a lot. All creation was made so that man become a ruler of it. And in the mind of God, he had already created the need for man to be filled only with God. He also made man the object of his giving. Giving man is a tribute to love, and that love would only be shown by giving man. God created man to be a relational being with the capacity to think and act with the freedom of choice. So man from the start was created so that he would also be related to God and find something that would fill in that vacuum that God has created to relate. No? So um, as a as a uh, relational being, man begins to relate with the environment around him. 
He started to name animals. He started to name plants. He started to name the fowls, the beast of the sea. But it seemed that something was still lacking. The vacuum was not yet filled at all. There was something that he wishes to relate to, but it's not always enough. And God saw that it was not good for man. Genesis 2.18 says that God saw that it was not good for man to be alone. But, and I will make a helper suitable for him. Okay? So, though man was relating to animals, it was not, it was not complete. The man was relating to plants around him. It was not complete. And God saw that when man is alone, it is not good for him. So God created, he said, I will make a man suitable for him or a helper suitable for him. God created someone to be related and to relate to man and he called that woman. Let me go back a little bit. God first made man an object of his giving act, right? Or act of giving. Now man, as God created him, had that vacuum inside his heart that can never be filled so that he finds someone to relate to so that his act of giving would also have an object. So when God saw who he created, he had in mind already that man would need someone to relate to. He did not leave man to invent his own um, friend or partner or helper, but God had in mind also of a suitable helper for man, so that the need that he has to relate to someone would be filled. So God created someone for man to relate to him and called him woman. In this flow of thought, we could conclude that the purpose of a relationship is to be complete. The purpose of a relationship is to be complete. Um, several uh, realizations come to mind as we review what I said earlier. Love begins with who? With God. Secondly, to establish a relationship was a divine initiative. It was never thought by man alone. God who created man created the vacuum for man to what? To look for a completeness or someone to complete it so that he could also express his act of giving as God has expressed his act of giving to man. So you would see the flow, God initiated it, man experienced it, and man also finds his way of finding a relationship which would complete him, and he wishes to find an object of his love to which he would um, focus his act of giving. It does not need a recipro reciprocal to begin a relationship. So, you would notice that when, when God created man and gave all that he need and provided the love that he need, man became an object of God's love. Correct? And he did not wait for a relationship to be established that man would return back what he gives to man. In other words, when a relationship is established, it happens when one 
starts to give to another without waiting that the other one would return the act. True love does not need a reciprocal. It does not wait for a return of what he gives. As God initiated that when he gave what? Man everything without thinking of man returning it. So a relationship starts without waiting for a return of a yes. A relationship does not happen when I give somebody something and then she smiles and says, But a relationship happens when one finds an object of his love and by the act of giving, he what? He gives the direction of giving to the object of his love. Then there is already a relationship for me. Go back to principle num to number three. It does not need to what? To have a reciprocal. It doesn't need to have a return of the act that was done. But when the act is established, there is already a relationship that is started on the initiative. Now, The next there says, the desire to give is an initial step into forming a relationship. The thought alone that you wish to give something or you wish to give a part of yourself is already telling us that it's an initial step into forming a relationship. A man senses completeness as he relates to another and he begins to feel the belongingness and acceptance of the other. So, these are our relation, our um, realizations to love. There is nothing that can complete man except that he, re he relates to another through belongingness and acceptance. So, again, the purpose of relationship is to find completeness through the act of giving. You can never start a relationship and you can never feel complete unless you give. Yeah? You do the act of giving. In, in other words, once a person once a person acts in giving towards an object of his love, he feels already complete. You don't wait for Will he, will she return back what I give? Will she give me a smile? You are not waiting for that. Because the desire to give and having the object to give it has already created a complete feeling inside the one who initiated. So that is um, the purpose of relationship. That's why in the Bible, you would read the passage that says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He never thinks of what will be the return, but he lays it because in the act of giving, he feels complete and happy in, the, in, the, in doing the act. So, what kind of relationship should man form? If this is so, no? when, when, when we feel complete when we give, what kind of relationships are we supposed to form? Adventist Home, page 99 says, Human love can never bear its precious fruit unless it is united with divine Nature. I want you to underline that. I want you to take note because that is very important. 
says there, human love cannot bear its precious fruits. Any relationship that exists cannot bear good fruits unless, first and foremost, the quote says, until it is united with divine nature. Until God is first in your life. Until God is the reason that you're loving. Until His will fills you up so that you have the right reasons to find someone to relate to, to find the object of your love, to find the one that you should be doing the act of giving. It will not bear its precious fruits. So young man, if you're only thinking of satisfying that urging feeling inside you, it will not bear good fruits. Young women, if you're only thinking that the killing feeling is the starting off of a good relationship, then it will not bear precious fruits. If you're only thinking that you will connect with the brightest, the most famous, the most yeah, popular, the leader of the AY will be your boyfriend. <laughs> the most popular nursing student or med tech top notcher, wow, is the reason for you to get related to young people, it will never bear precious fruits. It may spark fire temporarily and probably a short time, but it will not last until you are united with the divine nature. Secondly, Take note again, and train heavenward. So when you establish a relationship, what is the direction you are taking that relationship to? Are you letting it get into a direction wherein you will be famous in the campus? Are you getting it into the direction wherein you will feel the tickle and the giggle and the, you know, every time you see him, aha, gravity in the toe. <laughs> or say, wow, I don't know, but you know, the feeling so much, I cannot describe it, ma. Or uh, you get crazy, you don't know how to start uh, expressing yourself. You, you don't know which way to go. Because any human love not connected with the divine nature nor trained with the direction that this relationship should please God will fail. It will never bear precious fruits. Why? Because he who initiated love had the most pure thought in mind that everything he gives to the object of his love he would give the best pure thoughts and gifts and it would only be for God to be our example and the very first that would take hold of our hearts God designed that it should be an agent for blessing and uplifting humanity have you reviewed your relationships? Did it become a blessing to AUP? Did it bless the family of the loved one? Did your classmates, when they see you or your friends see you, did you become an inspiration that is so pure, so divine? That the direction is heavenward so that 
they don't see or hear stories that instead of uplifting their thoughts to heaven, you steer the basic instincts. Review your relationships, young people. Are they as God designed it? Designed to be a blessing and uplifting humanity so that when they see your relationship, they will say, God is so good that he designed love to be such and in that way, life would be a better time to spend. My object of love would cherish that there is a God whose author of love has authored it so well, so perfect, that I want to be a part of that experience. I want to experience being an object of love. Mm. Adventist Home says very clearly the very things that we should desire when human love is wished to be started, formed, or established. You know, some persons seek completeness. The purpose of the relationship is to be complete. And some persons would seek completeness in material possessions. Yeah, they would feel, they think that completeness in, real, in its real sense of the word is when you are successful, when you have so much money, when you get all the awards, when you get popular, when the teachers look up to you, I'm more applying it to the university setting. They think that completeness will be through admiring sexiness, outward beauty, long hair, long eyelashes, catwalks, big body. They thought they could find completeness in this. Possessions. Oh, I have the best laptop. Oh, you know, I got the latest smartphone. Oh, you know, I'm the president of... So we begin to add to the list. Some think that they would find completeness in a relationship by checking out that the man has a car instead of a character. You say, woo, wow. Some people think they'd find completeness in illicit affairs. Some young people think they'll find fulfillment when they tasted something early so that they would be experienced in it. Some young men would think that they would find completeness when they've abused somebody without anybody knowing it. Some gentlemen would feel when they have you know, tasted something and found it good tasting. The purpose of a relationship is to find completeness, to feel the experience of being complete because God fills in the vacuum he created at the start. But when you fill this in with something more, when you fill this in with a desire of the basic part of your anatomy, this is a different thing. This is not the completeness that God desires in the relationship. It is not getting involved with things that are of the world. Some people 
Look for completeness through fame and fortune. So they relate with big people and they wanted to be respected, but all this failed to fill in the search for true completeness, which is the purpose of every relationship. Because true completeness will only be experienced when we are connected with God who will provide the very person who is suitable helper for you. For time, for true love is unselfish and not self-centered. It is initiated in the act of giving. Before, because even before man had acknowledged it, God has already related to man in his act of giving. Before even Eve had acknowledged him, Adam has already related to him by giving him his what? His rib. Before even Eve could be Eve. Adam has already given a part of him before the relationship was even appreciated by the other there was already the act of giving before anything is expected for the return of what is given the act was already done however relationships today would wait for the answer before the act of giving could happen. Bakit ko siya bigyan ng teddy bear? Hindi pa naman kami ah. Bakit ko siya i-date? Eh, gagastos ako? Wow. Eh, di wow. Have you heard this? Have you said it? Because we thought that we should have first the sign of a brewing relationship before what? Before we give. So we wait until that happens. But the Bible says, or the Bible gives us an example that God who initiated love at its best gave before even Adam could acknowledge God's love for him. Eve, before she could even acknowledge it, Adam has already related to her by giving a part of him. So to be complete, it is initiated by the act of giving. No relationship is best, is true, is complete until it is initiated by the act of giving. So, how can a relationship be sustained? Let's open our Bibles to the book of John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And if you have time, look into the whole chapter and read and read and read. Because in this chapter, you will find out that the word giving, give, gave is repeated more than a dozen times. You could mark that up, look it up in the chapter of John 17, because it is the picture of a perfect relationship between God the Father and Jesus his Son. There's always the word coming up, give, gave, given, repeatedly. If you check the chapter, you will notice, and if you will count, you will notice that the word give, gave, given goes beyond the count of a dozen, only in one chapter. 
Because as we read and we read this chapter, we would find out that here is reflected the pattern of a perfect relationship between God, the Father, and His Son. There's always that essence and act of giving. Giving and giving when you love to the object of your love. So, there are three essentials for a relationship to thrive. Three essentials for a relationship to thrive. And we're picking it out from the chapter of John 17. Okay? First is, read it from verses 2, verses 6 to 8, and verse 24. You will notice there that the first essential for a relationship to thrive is giving. Giving, giving, and giving. So probably some of you would think, unfair. When you are in a relationship, they say you cannot love without giving, Right? Because giving and giving and giving is one essential. When you say essential, it is very important. It must not be missed. It should be a part of. It should be a priority to look into. So giving is one essential reason for a relationship to thrive. So when a relationship stops giving, when one partner stops giving, you begin to question. This should be an essential part or practice in a relationship. What's happening? Why has it stopped? Isn't it that love from the start is that there should be an object for the act of giving? And if it stops, you might question, what is happening? It is an essential part for a relationship to thrive. When a man in a relationship stops giving attention to the woman. Will the relationship continue? If you're the young lady, do you like it? We are together, together forever. We're not giving time to each other. You're not given attention. It's not only material gifts. You're not, you're not given tips so that you would grow together, you know. Giving in any form makes the relationship strong and, and, and thrive through all the storms that may come in the relationship. And what if the giving is diverted to another? Then check it out. Is the relationship established in the pattern of divine nature? Is the relationship heavenward in its direction? Is the relationship blessing the world? Is the relationship uplifting humanity? Or are you depressing the people? Are you questioning what's happening in the relationship? Look into that again, because the essential of love, number one, is giving. Number two, the is number two essential of love is knowing. To know more, better, the other. You know, it makes me smile 
when I asked Pastor Orbe, giving comes in first, even first the knowing, because the style of relationships in campus is knowing first, then getting related, and then giving. Am I right? Ah, anak yan ni Ganto. Ah, yung barkada niya si Ganto. Ah, okay. Pwede, pwede. Papapasagot ko yan, no? Without the knowledge of the woman or the lady. Kapustahan tayo. Then giving. Ah, may bulaklak na. Precious week. Kabibig. There's giving, but is it established on the right kind? You know, these things could surface. These things could cover up the genuine kind if we are not connected with God. So first and foremost, when you are. When you're starting a relationship and the purpose of that relationship is to be complete, seek God first. And for your partner, is he also saturated with the love for God before the love of you? Because if it's only human love, it will not really go successful. Because humans can always be a failure even in relationships. So knowing. Knowing has several levels. Knowing first, acquaintance. You sat at the other bench of the gym and then she sat opposite the bench and you say, she's kind of, you know, Whereas my, my daughter, sorry for giving this as, as an example. One night they went home. The elder said, Mama, can you give me a chance to stay in the dorm? I just want to experience, you know, the feeling of independence. And what's dorm life? The second said, Woo, is a bit mo We are in the dorm. like I was just quiet I was I was waiting for the other half of the story Ah uh, tinawag si Yes Vivra So say ko bakit anak gusto mo magdorm Wala pang sagot yung panganay sabi na ng pangalawa Kasi yung crush niya nasa dorm ay makita niya sa cafeteria yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and so on and so forth I said, uh, hmm. Ate kasi, sabihin mo na kasi. Sabihin mo yung totoo. You know, the desire to know is part of an essential in establishing the relationship. And not only establishing the relationship, but for the relationship to thrive. So, the first level of knowing is through acquaintance. Acquaintance night. Announcement ng MC. Okay, you may now, you know, pick your partner's gentleman. You know. Hindi mo pa siya kilala, pero twinkle-twinkle na yung eyes mo. Ang kita mo, taga-nursing yan. Ay, medek. May bago ah. Parang bago yan dito. Freshman nga eh. Tara, tara, tara. Acquaintance lang muna. First level of knowing is to get acquainted. It's simply trying to say the casual meeting is acquaintance. Sometimes it's just a plain hi. You know, you walk the pathway and then you say hi. Kasi yung kasama mo, kakilala. Hi. I, uh, hi. <laughs> the second time around you meet, you say hi. Oh yeah, I met you. Uh, was it with your friend? Yeah, we met at the pathway. Oh, she remembered. Oh, 
score. Or also the lady, you know? Say, he knows my name. Eh, you remembered. Eh, that was last year. But, eh, eh, eh. Acquaintance level. But it is, is it right that after meeting on the first level of acquaintance, we had a memory shared? Mom, the memory was never to be forgotten. It was so cutie cutie memory. And we just met. And I feel like we clicked right away. Acquaintance level is never a reason enough to say that you found the right person to complete you. Because the next level comes in. The second level of knowing says friendship. Ah. Friend, friends na kami, ma'am. Uh, a month ago, acquaintance pa lang kami. Ngayon, friendship level na kami. Sabi, Mom, friendship zone. What? How do you describe that? Then, my student would say, uh, Minsan, he goes to the dorm. Sinusundo po ako sa cafeteria. Friends lang po kami. Friends. After a few weeks, I would hear them talking on the hallway and say, Friends, na talaga kami. Iba ng tono, no? Friends, grabe talaga. Ay, naku, ewan ko. <laughs> Tapos may intrap sa lang klase. Ay, naku, kita ko na naman si friendship. <laughs> Am I coming in with you? Do you hear this? This happens all the time. I only stand on the in the door by the door and say, hmm, okay, something's brewing. From an acquaintance level, you're knowing a person to a level higher, which is already what? Friendship. Wow. Friendship level. And as an essential of every thriving relationship, the knowing should go up the level. Or should I say the opposite way, it should be knowing the person deeper. Knowing the person beyond the facade of fronts, of smiles, long hair, beautiful eyelashes that is removed at night. <laughs> it's beyond the shapes that you see because there are pads when she sleeps. It's beyond the makeup that at night time she takes it off with Pan's facial wash and her face doesn't shine pinkish as you saw her the day before. Level of knowing goes higher on a step level like in a ladder or we may say gets deeper into going beyond what you just see at the surface level. What is she? Who is she beyond the smiles? Who is she beyond a very good uniform when her locker is like the garbage can? <laughs> Who is he? Beyond the performance in the classroom, he doesn't even know how to read the Bible, how to pray. Because he has so much anger inside him. But when he's beside you, he is as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> the level of knowing grows, young people, so that it is not safe to establish or conclude that you are able to complete yourself as the purpose of a relationship on an acquaintance level and then jump right away to a higher level of knowing each other. 
this relationship will always be shaky and may end up what the ending you don't like to even think about. Third level of knowing. What's the first? Acquaintance level. The second? Friendship. Develop deeper into the relationship and develop the filial level of relationship. Family level. You know in your family you get so close to each other? You just love hanging with each other. You quarrel, but you mend up because you understand each other. You know the shortcomings. You know the strength of everybody. And you accept them just the way they are. Knowing that is essential to every relationship that will thrive. The generation storms should get up to a higher degree and that is to develop in the level of knowing filial level family like knowing do you know his family um maybe because i'm on the medical line I was teaching one subject about uh, cleft lip. And I was, you know, I was stressing the points that this can be inherited to the third generation. And even if I see you not having any manifestations, if you have a third degree relationship in the family which has this, it may appear on the next lines. It may appear in your children, now, in the level of getting yourself complete, when love is true, it accepts and embraces everything. Are you ready for that? Some of you are too idealistic. They will say, oh, you know, the background, you know. And suddenly, they will just drop the person and say, oh, we're no more. I learned kasi, you know. To be complete, is to embrace the person you have known. And whatever you know, you will embrace him. As God has set us an example, Christians like rugs, God still value them. God still love them. Also, in that matter, when we know the person to a deeper degree, as we form relationship or relate with them, we will embrace everything. The weaknesses, the strengths, the lacks, the plus factors, everything comes with it. And we should know that. More often than not, we jump into a relationship without knowing and going through the third level. And then when we are in a relationship and the boat starts rocking during stormy times, you get to jump off and leave the other partner staying on the boat or you don't know whether he stays or not. Because the essential of a thriving relationship never reached a level that embraces the person or object of love and completes him no matter what. Now think, are your relationships ready to go towards this level? If not, then realign it. Let it reach to a level that is knowing more the person, deeper and deeper, and do not engage to jump to the highest level. You know what's the highest level? The highest level is what we call the commitment level, which is between husband and wife. Sometimes, from level one, they jump to level four. Correct? 
they think the relationship will complete them. But the knowing level was set aside, very essential, very important. It was not nurtured to grow and rise up to one step after the other so that deeper knowing of each other will develop until we reach the fourth level and the commitment level of knowing one another. That is where we experience God's oneness on the commitment level. It is not experienced on the acquaintance level. It is not experienced on the friendship level and now you are committing. I'd like to feel one with you. The guy would say, you love me really? Let's be one. But you are still on the acquaintance level. You are still on the what? On the what? Friendship level. You've never been on the third level yet. And so after you get off the thrill and the feeling, also that's just it. Okay, let's go on each way and find another. That's very sad. Then, we have the covenant relationship on the fourth level. So, what's the first essential? Giving. What's the second essential? Knowing. Now we go to the third essential. Okay, the third essential is submitting. So, when we have experienced the fourth level of knowing now we go to also the third essential submitting submission is very important in the bible there are many mention of submission like church submitting to god the wife submit yourselves to your husband the slaves submit themselves to their masters the students Submitting to the teachers, the administrators, you know, these experiences of submission is often uh, experienced by most of us. Submission is also needed when both of you are not on equal sides. Submission is also needed and essential in a thriving relationship when you are not equal on the economic status there are a lot when you have no the same ideas when you have no the same points in your discussion submission is needed the basis of submission is the relationship with god if you are made to submit outside of the will of god the relationship is headed towards failure and trouble. Now when you are made to do something that is outside the will of God in a relationship, then that relationship is going towards the road of trouble and failure. So submission to each other is just secondary to submission to the will of God. So, um, intimacy, young people, is neither a measurement of successful relationship. Oi, sweet! Hi! Grabe, nilalanggam na kayo. That is not a measure that that relationship is successful. Bagay kayo. Look alike na yung face niyo. That is not a relationship. That, that is not a measure that the relationship will be successful. Ay, lagi na kayo magkasama. Maganda yan, you're spending time with each other. Is not a measure that the relationship will be successful. 
Thriving relationships are not measured by intimacy or level of frequency of seeing or meeting or dating. Uy, logging sila nagdi-date. Ang cute naman nila. They really spend time for each other. It's not only that that will measure success. Neither is harmony of partners. Ano talaga kayo, no? Magkasundo talaga kayo. Uh, chorister ka, tapos siya, theology, magsispeaker, you know? I pair so much. It's so, you know, parang talaga you were, you know, you're so togetherness. I often hear that. Ah, education ka, siya theology, ay bagay. You know, you can work together. That is not the measure of a happy, successful relationship. Which is purpose is what? Complete you. But, the lines of the statement says, but it is measured by the conformity of the partners to God's word. When the common thing between the partners is their conformity to what the Lord expects. If they take time to study His word, and realign the relationship to what God desires, then true completeness and the purpose of the relationship would be completed and blessed by God. So it's not anything else, young people. It's, it's not how often you wink at each other or see each other eye to eye or your your blouse matches the color of his polo shirt. Or you wear a couple shirt. Or you agree, you know, to go places. It's not that. Unless the relationship is conforming to the word, word of God. This will not thrive through the storms of life. Remember Solomon? Solomon have a lot of concubines. Was it confirming to God's word? He might be enjoying the physical aspects of the relationship, but did it complete him totally to what God desires? He had to come up with consequences and more problems. Remember Ahab and Jezebel. Remember other relationships in the Bible that failed because it was all based on human attraction, human factor, materials that are external and not conforming with God's word. In conclusion, to summarize everything that we've talked about tonight, it boils down to four big points. One, relationship was a divine concept. God had planned it after all. And his plan is perfect from the start. Secondly, it begins with the act of what? Giving. Relationship is initiated and is begun by the act of giving. That expresses your desire to be related and to find completeness when you do the act of giving. That completes you already. Now, how does the relationship become complete? When she also what? Desires to give. Okay. And then the, the third is, does not need a reciprocal. Does not wait for a return of the act. As long as it gives and it loves to give. And then is sustained by essential values, which are giving, knowing, and submitting to one another. May the Lord bless you, young people, as 
The purpose of every relationship is to find completeness and the only one who would complete it unto eternity is taking God first into your lives and then he will grant you the desires of your heart.